All right, there we go. It should be recording now. Okay. Um, so today we are going to be going through the review. Um, but there are a couple of things that I want to go through first. Um, All right, let's see. All right, so here's our review. Um, I'm gonna be going through this. Uh, I guess before the review, let's look at Web Campus. Uh, so you go to Web Campus, go to the, the uh, home page where you go when you log in, scroll down. Uh, you should see the uh, Project 3 module. And uh, right here, the um, Fall 20 uh, class, Fall 2020 uh, class survey data.csv. This is the survey data so that has been uploaded. Um, if you click on the Theme 3 project page, this I added this morning, uh, so you'll see that it has. As soon as this loads, I can show you. As the information for it, uh, last semester I did a video on um, going through this project and how to uh, how to load the the data on Stack Crunch, as well as going in in uh, into uh, quite a bit of detail on what what the project entails. So that's what this this page is for in this, this video. Um, while we're here, let's go back to our main page. So again, scroll down to project three. And that's the overview, project three. Uh, and let's, let's take a look at the, at the outline here really quickly. If that loads, there we go. I'm going to. I'm not going to spend too much time on this since I, I covered it in in uh, a fair amount of detail on the video. But I do want to kind of uh, skim through it and show you what you'll be doing. Uh, so this one, we're doing a, a statistical analysis of the survey that the uh, Math 120 courses took. So. Uh, so question one here, uh, each group, group member should complete a survey online that was already done that was sent out. So um, number one is not going to be graded on, especially since the survey was, uh, was anonymous. Um, problem two, pick two numerical grade elements you're interested in. So the example they give is test one grade and the homework average. Um, could be any of the two uh, numerical uh, values that are included on the survey. So it could be test one, test two, could be homework average, the mini project average, any two of those numerical that you want to pick. Um, they chose the, uh, for the example, the test one grade and the homework average so that I show in the video. And so this, uh, for part A, you're gonna use this, to, and talk. Going to use statistics to analyze the data. So you're going to look at things like what is the mean, the median, the mode. Um, how do you? Uh, what are, What are the quartiles? Things like that. As well as um, you know, all, all of the the what is the standard deviation? Um, part B is a histogram to display the data and uh, determine a bin size. So the bin size we've talked about before. Again, I show this in the video in more detail. Um, it's gonna create, create histograms for the uh, two numerical data that you've chosen, the test one grade and the homework. And I do show you on the video how to do that as well as uh, how to do the bin size there and then analyze the data in the histogram. So for part C, you should have a paragraph or two or three um, after the histogram and the data is included, um, 
sorry, the statistical data, not the data itself, <laughs> um, that that goes through uh, what the statistical data means, kind of just a summary, uh, some uh, enough to show that you uh, understand what the statistical data means. Uh, problem three is going to be very similar to problem two, uh, except you're going to decide on a burning question about the data. The example that they give here is whether uh, girls outperform boys on a particular item. So I'd take, for example, you could ask, um, did girls outperform boys on test one? And I believe that is the, uh, the example that I go through in the video. Um, so you're going to uh, display the, that, uh, find the statistical data again using uh, StackCrunch and creating the histograms and then analyze the data in your, and uh, answer your, your question. Um, and again, a couple of paragraphs afterwards to, to kind of describe that. So I, again, that's a quick overview of what we're, we are doing uh, for, for that. Um, I am going to be assigning the groups tonight. Uh, so if you do want to work alone on this project, make sure to let me know if you have not already by tonight through email. Sorry, all right. Uh, make sure to let me know by tonight through email that you want to work alone on the project if you have not already. It's not going to be the same group I'm going to assign. It'll be a two to three person group for this one. Um, so if, you've not, if you have not already sent me an email and you want to work alone, uh, please do so by tonight. Um, and again, the data here, the data is found in the fall 2020 class survey data.csv. Um, one thing that I do want to mention with that as well, um, make sure that you uh, open this using Excel or some similar, similar program so that you can see uh, the columns, what, what the question is that was asked. Um, so uh, what I would do first before opening this in StackCrunch, open up this in Excel, decide, uh, what two numerical um, data you're going to look at, data categories, whether it's test one, test two, the homework average, the mini project average, um, and find where that is in terms of the columns of this uh, survey, and then open it in StackCrunch. All right. Uh, so we are looking at the review today. Let me scroll, let's scroll up. So just as a reminder, if you go to the theme three overview module, it's uh, the study guide is found here. This is the third uh, file. So that is what we're going over today. And uh, before we jump into it, uh, I do want to ask if there are any questions uh, so far in any of the, um, any questions, comments on any of the material or homework up to this point. And you can either, again, you can use the uh, audio if you feel brave enough to, or you can type it in chat. And I know there is a little bit of a delay, so I'm gonna keep my eye on chat in case any, um... when is project three due? That is a good question. Let me, let me pull up my, let's see. Next week is the exam, uh, but I don't want to give you guys more than one week. Let's say, uh, let's say December 6th, Sunday, December 6th. So you guys will have a couple of weeks to work on that. It shouldn't take that long. Um, but for the other projects, I have given you a couple of weeks, so we'll, we'll give you a couple of weeks for that. Oh, that is, um, hold on one second. Let, let me, let's go back to here. Let me make sure that that has been, okay. Sorry, that was, <laughs> I didn't click a button. Um, Try refreshing now and seeing if you can find it now. Let me, 
open this up on my end and see if it will. Well, I'm sorry about that. Let me let me check on my end if that that fixed that. See it now. Okay, okay. So it should it should be showing up now. Um, so I apologize for that. Uh, you might have to refresh or um, go to a different uh, go to a different page and then go back to the home page uh, to get that working. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and, and begin then. And if you do have a question, again, just let me know either uh, through the audio or through the chat. I'm keeping my eye on the chat uh, in case any, any uh, questions pop up. So test three, we're covering chapters uh, six, eight, and nine. So six, remember, we uh, did six A, B, and C, those three sections. Uh, eight, we did eight A and eight B. And for nine, we did nine B and nine C. So those were the those, those were the sections we covered. Those were the sections that we will be testing on for test three. Um, the formulas here, the for, the formula box. This will be provided. Well, uh, this this test is going to be on Pearson. Um, so any of these uh, that are needed will be provided by Pearson. I'll, I'll make sure that those are included with the uh, Pearson questions. Um, so also, while, while I'm on that topic, um, because this will be on Pearson, uh, for this exam in particular, I would recommend um, taking the practice test that is on Pearson, uh, even if you haven't for the previous exams to try and get used to the format that it will be since it will be uh, given through Pearson. Um, also, because Pearson can only mark a problem as wrong, right or wrong, uh, but I still want to give partial points, then for your exam, please make sure to um, write down your steps. So write down problem one, write down all of your steps in order as if you were taking the exam in class, and uh, be prepared to send in your, your work uh, for partial points. Um, because I don't want to switch that on you guys at, at you know with the last exam, I still want to give you guys partial points for uh, possible points for work towards the correct answer. So um, while you're taking the exam, make sure that you're writing legibly, writing down the steps, um, just as if you were taking it in person, and be prepared to scan that and send that in uh, for partial points. Um, Let's see, one other thing. So that, that is going to be next Tuesday. Uh, and so if this were, if we were still in person, we would have the exam on Tuesday. That would be our, our, uh, our thing for the day, our schedule for the day. We wouldn't do anything else that day. So same, same thing uh, for this since it's not, even though we're remote now. Uh, so on Tuesday is going to be the exam, no lecture. Uh, and then Thursday is Thanksgiving break, but after that we'll return to the uh, the Tuesday Thursday uh, lecture schedule. Um, all right. So again, this this will be provided. Oh, uh, good question. When does the exam close? So I think I'm going to have the exam open for 24 hours because I realized that um, a lot of students had to uh, had to move back home because of, of the whole situation. And uh, so there, there are different time zones that the students that are in now, as well as uh, there might be some problems with connectivity. So I'm gonna have the exam open for 24 hours on uh, starting Tuesday. Um, that way if you, if you start, uh, so one, one situation that would be bad is Take, for example, you started taking the exam, 10 minutes later you had connectivity issues and lost your, your internet. I don't want that to be the case um, for your exam, so I'll, I'm just gonna have it open for 24, uh, 24 hours. You should, should be able to do the exam in 75 minutes, but I realize you know, things like that occurs, uh, things like that occur and has occurred in the past, so we're going to uh, 
going to be pretty uh, forgiving on that, make it open for 24 hours and not, not timed. Uh, but again, you should be able to do it in, in uh, 75 minutes. That's a good question. Um, and let's see. So I think that summarizes that uh, the format for the exam for, for test three and the final exam. Um, I'm going to send out, send out an email uh, probably on Monday, reminding you guys of that and, and having that information as well. Uh, okay, so, uh, so let's go over this real quick. So the, uh, the standard score is going to be given or how to find the standard score is going to be given. You take the data value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Uh, this graphic right here, this is the uh, normal distribution. So just as a reminder, this is our 68, 95, 99.7 rule. Um, so that says that the uh, uh, within one standard deviation is 68% of our data. So in this interval of 68% of our data and so on for the other ones. Uh, and then the last four here are the linear and exponential. So this is our linear equation, the y equals mx plus b. Uh, what I had in class was y equals b plus mx. That's fine. You can switch the order of addition it still works. And then these other three are the uh, exponential. So here's the exponential q equals q naught times one plus r to the power of t. And then you have um, the bottom two uh, on the left side is the half-life formula. On the right side is the doubling time formula. Uh, so those will be provided on Pearson on the appropriate problem. I'm going to make sure that they are, they are there. So those are, are the is the information that will be provided for the exam. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and jump into the material then. So uh, let's go to problem one. So problem one, we're looking at, uh, hold on, let me I need to reorganize my windows so that I can see you guys and still see the, the problems. Okay, uh, problem one. The body temperature of randomly selected normal healthy adults in degrees Fahrenheit is 98 point, well, gives us the uh, five data points. You wanna find the mean, the median, and the mode for this data set. Okay, so let's go to our digital paper here. Let me Let me adjust this. Okay. So problem one, we wanna find the mean, the median, and mode for the data set. And the data set that we have, uh, let's go ahead and write that down. We have 98.6, uh, 98.6 again, uh, 99.4, 98.0, and 98.4. Okay. Uh, now with the mean, the median, and the mode, um, that was not included in the formula sheet so that you should know how to do. Uh, so let's remind ourselves of what those are. So the mean is usually what comes to mind when you think of average, the word average. So we take the sum of all the data points divided by the number of data points. In this case, we have five data points. So let's go ahead and take the sum of that. Uh, so you should, if hopefully, should be able to follow along with your calculator. Let's go ahead and add those together, those five data points. So we have 98.6 uh, twice plus 99.4 plus 98.0 plus 98.4. Adding those together, we get 493 divided by five is 98.6. So our mean is 98.6. OK. 
Okay. Uh, the median, if you remember, is the middle value for the data. So first we need to sort the data, which actually should have been our first step before finding the mean, but that's all right. So we find the lowest value is 98.0. Uh, the next one is 98.4. Then we have 98.6 twice. And last we have 99.4. Okay, so to find the middle value, we cross off the lowest value and the highest value, and then the next lowest, next highest. And here we get the uh, 98.6 for our median. All right, now as a question for you guys, uh, how do we find the median? Uh, in this case, we had an odd number of data points. If we have an even number of data points, if we had two middle values, how would we find the median? What would we do in that case? So, excellent, yes, good. You would add the two middle values and divide by two. Good. All right, and the last one is the mode. And this one is the most common value or values. That's how we defined it. We can have multiple modes or we might have zero modes. In this case, looking at the data, we have 98.6 appears twice, and no other number appears twice, so 98.6 is also our mode. Um, so just as a reminder, the mode is the number that appears most often. There can be multiple modes, and there, it is possible for there to be no modes at all. If all of the numbers appear the same number of times, there's no mode. So that was that. Was that. Okay, so that's question one. Let me go back to the review here. Um, also, for, for the sake of, of time today, I'm not going to pause after every question to ask if there, uh, after every problem to ask if there are questions. Uh, there might be questions. If you do have a question, please interrupt me either on the audio, if you feel comfortable enough, or uh, in chat, which I do realize that um, some devices, if you're if you're uh, typing a question, would be a lot a lot slower than on, uh, take for example, a laptop. Um, but I will be keeping my eye on chat, or you know, my ears open for any questions. If there are questions, just um, stop me, get my attention. We'll answer those questions, and then go back to the material. So. Um, that's what I want to do uh, to save a little bit of time. I don't want to be don't I don't want to be waiting one minute after every after every solution to see if there are questions. But I do want to answer questions if there are any. So again, if you have a question, just just get my attention either in the audio or in the chat. I will answer it as soon as I see it, and then we'll move forward with the where we were at in the review. Okay. So question two. Uh, so we want to consider the following results for a test in a class. So we have 1,000 students took the exam. Median is 87. The mean is 92. The low score is 24. The high score is 98. Uh, so that is the statistical data that we have for the class. We want to, we want to know is the data symmetric or is it skewed left or skewed right? Um, so that is the first thing that we have. Uh, and then the next thing is, is the variation high or low, which we will talk about and then explain your reasoning. So let's go back to our digital paper here. And let me scroll down. So this one is question two. So we have uh, the number of students that took the exam is 1,000. We have our median is 87. So our median was 
Uh, let's see, the mean is 92. Uh, what else we have? Low score is 24. And the high score is 98. We want to know is this uh, symmetric or skewed? So we want to identify is this symmetric or skewed. And again, we want to identify whether it's skewed, uh, left skewed or right skewed. So for this question, um, let's go ahead and uh, start looking at our distribution. So we're looking at exam scores. So we could have a zero, have a 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%. Up to 100. So let's let me make sure that I have that. Okay. Now our median was 87. So right here, eighty-seven is our median. The mean is ninety-two. So here at 92 is the mean. And let me see if I can get uh, this to work. Maybe it is not, hold on one second. Let me I sometimes have to readjust these because the streaming throws off my windows. Okay, uh, the low score was 24. So here is the low score, which is at 24, and the high score was at 98. I'm gonna have to move that and move it back. So 98 is the high score. All right, so our data, we can see from the low and the high score covers this interval. And remember, what is the what does the median mean? Uh, uh, what is the definition of the median? Uh, the definition of the median is that it's the exact middle value. So notice that half of our data is here. Here is half of our data. And the other half of our data is in this interval between 24 and 87. So here is half of the data. So half of the data is between 24 and 87. The other half of the data points are between 87 and 98. That's what the definition of our median is. All right. Uh, so looking at this, uh, is this symmetric? or skewed? Let's start with that question. Is it symmetric or not symmetric? In this particular case, we would expect what? Not symmetric. Because if this was symmetric, the median would have to be exactly at the halfway point between 24 and 98 and 87 is not the halfway point. So this is not symmetric, which, me which means it's skewed. So now, um, where is most of our data on the left side of the graph or the right side of the graph? Well, let, let me try and get a different color here. Notice that the mean, lost my mouse, here we are, the mean was 92 which means that I would say the majority of our data has got to be pretty high, especially since we have a score of 24. Otherwise, our mean would be a lot lower. So it looks like that the majority of our data is here. It's uh, 
in this high range, which means our our data, if we were to graph it, should look something should look something like this. So is this uh, left skewed or right skewed then? And if you remember, we determine the skewness by where the outliers are. Are the outliers on the left or the right for this data? The outliers are on the left. Yep. So here are the outliers. So this is left skewed. Excellent. All right. Uh, let's go back to our review page, see if we answered all of the questions there. Uh, is the variation high or low? Okay, so let's go back to our to our graph here. So if we where's uh, if we look at um, the spread of the data, most of the data again is going to have to be here in the high values. Otherwise, the mean would not be as high as it is. It would not be a ninety-two. So in this case, the variation is going to have to be pretty low. Um, if it was more spread out, if more of the data was was uh, in more of the range, uh, closer to twenty-four. Um, then it would be the, the mean would have to be a lot lower than 92, possibly even lower than the median. Um, so in this case, it has uh, low variation. So we can determine that from, uh, from the graph. Uh, yeah, so if it had if it had points that were closer to 24, the mean would be a lot lower than 92. Um, so because the mean is so high, and remember, this is uh, a thousand students took this exam. So the mean here is out of a thousand scores, and 92 is pretty high. So if it was um, if it had higher variation, then the mean should be a lot lower than 92, especially since our low lowest value is at 24. Okay. So again, if you have questions, let me know in the audio or in chat. And uh, if not, we'll continue the review. So that was question two. Let's go to question three. And make, let me make sure I'm, I'm sharing the correct screen. Okay. Uh, so question three, you heard from a student. So this is a hypothetical question. You are an instructor. Uh, you heard from a student that your Tuesday, Thursday class had gotten a sneak uh, preview, sneak copy of the test you gave your Monday, Wednesday class. Now uh, below right here, this graphic shows the box plot for Tuesday, Thursday is the top, uh, is the top box plot, which is shown in red. The Monday, Wednesday is the bottom box plot, which is uh, shown in blue. And we want to know, um, using this box plot of the data, uh, could, this, could this be true? Could, could the Tuesday, Thursday class have gotten a sneak peek of, of the test? Well, let's look at looking at the box plots again. The, the top one here is the Tuesday, Thursday class. The bottom one is the Monday, Wednesday class. Which class did better overall on the exam? And while you're typing that out or getting ready to respond with audio, let's remind ourselves what the box plot means. So the very le left point here is the low value. The left side of the box is the first quartile, so between the left point and the left side of the box is one fourth of the data points. Uh, from the left side of the, of the box to the middle, uh, to the middle line of the box is median. So that is our uh, second fourth of our data. Fourth of our data is in that region. Uh, and then from the middle, middle line of the box to the right side of the box is a fourth. And then from the right side of the box to the right point is a fourth of our data. 
All right, so which class, looking at these box plots, which class performed better on the exam? The uh, top one, Tuesday, Thursday, or the bottom one, the Monday, Wednesday? Tuesday, Thursday, excellent, good. So that's, that's showing up. And if you look at that, the Tuesday, Thursday, only a fourth of the scores are less than what it looks like is about 78. Three fourths of the scores are bigger than, are greater than 78. Whereas here, comparing that, it uh, looks like the median for the second class is at a 78. So only a half of the students did better than a 78 in the second class using the, the box plots. So with that in mind, um, could, this, could this statement possibly be true? Could it possibly be true that the uh, Tuesday, Thursday class got a sneak peek of the exam in that case? And in this case, yes, it could be true. Good, it is possible, right. And one thing we do have to be careful about, remember with statistics, this doesn't prove that they did. This just kind of, this just shows that that might be true. There could be other reasons why the, uh, why the data points are a lot higher, um, but we'll not, we'll not get into, into that in, <laughs> in more detail than we need to, so. Um, good, good, so. Uh, interpreting the box plots there. Uh, number four, uh, finding the standard deviation we're not going to do by hand, so I'm not, we can skip this one. Uh, number five, interpreting standard deviation we are going to do, so we can look at number five. So reminder um, for standard deviation, the standard deviation is a number that is, is uh, basically kind of a measure of the spread of the data. A higher standard deviation means the data is more spread out. A lower standard deviation means the, uh, the data is, is closer together. All right, so let's look at this problem with that in mind. Um, so we have two factories, each produce a thousand computer chips per day. So we're, we're looking at two separate factories. Each one makes a thousand, uh, produces a thousand computer chips. In your factory, the mean number of defective chips uh, per day is three chips with a standard deviation of 2.5 chips. Your competitor's factory, the mean number of defective chips uh, per day is four, and the standard deviation is 0.5 chips. Uh, so the first thing we want to know is uh, which factory is better? Well, looking at the number of, of chips that are produced, 1,000, the means are at three chips and four chips. Those are pretty, pretty close, uh, considering that we're looking at a thousand chips per day, a mean of three and a mean of four is pretty close. So the means are almost, are, are really, really close together for, for this data. Since we have this massive number of chips we're producing and this very uh, small difference in the number in the means. So, if that's the case, if the means are relatively close together or almost the same, then what we want to do then is look at the spread of the data. So um, your factory, you have a standard deviation of 2.5 defective chips, whereas your competitor, you have, uh, they have a standard deviation of 0.5 defective chips. So which one is the better factory? In this case, which, uh, so thinking about this, we would want the data not to be spread out. We would want the data to be relatively close together. So in this case, the better factory is the one that has a lower standard deviation, which is the competitor's factory. So again, because the means are almost exactly the same, we have a mean of three chips and a mean of four chips that are defective. Then we look at the standard deviation. For your factory, there is a higher spread of the data. You have 2.5. Uh, chips for the standard deviation, whereas your competitor has 0 0.5. So your, your competitor, in this case, is doing better on, on the, uh, the production of the chips. All right. So that was question five. And I'm not seeing any questions, so we'll move on to question six. But again, you can interrupt me if you do have a question. That's perfectly fine. Uh, so number six, 
so here we have two things, um, two types of things going on here. Oh, uh, question four, we're skipping. Since that is finding the standard deviation, we're not doing that by hand. Yeah, so we, we skipped four. Um, yeah, no worries. Uh, so question six, we have a set of infant weights is normally distributed. So there's our keyword normally distributed. So we have a normal distribution with a mean of five pounds and a standard deviation of one pound. So first we want to use the 68, 95, 99.7 rule to find the percentage of infants that weigh more than six pounds. Um, so just as a note, uh, that should appear in, in this rule. And I think for this problem, I'm going to have it where you're both using the rule and answering the question. So you'll have, uh, have a bit there to cover. So let's go to our digital paper. I think I'm going to need a new, yeah, a new page. So let me get that situated. Okay, so this one was uh, problem six. So we're looking at a normal distribution. Of weights. We have the mean is, let's see, what was the mean was five pounds. And the standard deviation was one pound. Okay, standard deviation is one pound. And one of the, the questions we want to know is uh, what percentage, what percentage weighs more than six pounds? All right. So we're going to look at the 95, nine, uh, not 95, 68. 95, 99.7 rule for this data. Since this is a normal distribution. So the first one is we have 68% of the weights are within one standard deviation of the mean. So are between, the mean was five pounds minus one standard deviation, so one pound, and the mean five pounds plus one standard deviation. So 68% of the weights are between four and six pounds. Next, 95%. 95% uh, are between two standard deviations. So we'll have uh, five, minus two of the standard deviation, so two times one, and five minus two times one, or plus two times one, add two standard deviations. Now here, even though we know that two times one is two, I'm putting that in parentheses to emphasize that that is the standard deviation. So that is uh, between three and seven, pounds. And the last part, 99.7% are between, so we'll have uh, five minus three standard deviations and five plus three standard deviations. So that is between uh, two and eight pounds. All right. So again, I think what I'm going to do for the exam, if I include a problem like this, uh, you're going to want to, you're going to need to find the, the numbers themselves for the rule. So that would be the first part. 
And the next part, uh, what percentage weighs more than six pounds? Well, so you'll notice that six pounds, this shows up in the 68% rule. So this shows up there. So what we have is uh, 100 minus 68 are either less than four or greater than six. And uh, so we have 100 minus our 68. Again, you don't have to do that in your head. You can use your calculator, that's perfectly fine. 100 minus 68 gives us 32. So that is 32% are either less than four or greater than six. So we get that from our, uh, from this part of our rule. So that's probably going to show up in either the 68% part, the 95% part, or the 99.7% part. Now this is symmetric. Remember the uh, normal distribution is symmetric. So, we take half of the 32%, which is 16%, and we get that 16% are less than four, and 16% are greater than six. And that is the question that was, that was asked. How, what percent is greater than six pounds? Okay, so that's the first bit uh, using the a normal distribution using the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. So you should be able to find these numbers for, for the three parts of the rules, the find the intervals. And you should be able to answer this question if I give you uh, one of the numbers from the rule, uh, from one part of the rule, um, you should be able to answer what percent is uh, greater than or less than that number. Okay, let's go back to our review page. Uh, um, so for the, that's a good question. For the uh, normal distribution, uh, the normal distribution is always symmetric. Um, that is one of its properties. So whenever you see the phrase normal, normally distributed or normal distribution, then it has to be symmetric. Otherwise it could not be a normal distribution. It could not be normally distributed. Yep, uh, you're welcome. Uh, so let's see, so that was that. Next part, standard score. Find your infant's standard score if they weigh seven pounds. Uh, now, if you scroll up to the top, let's scroll back up to the top to the equations part. Notice that the standard score is given. So it's the data value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Okay, so let's go back. The data value that we have is seven pounds. Okay, so let's go to our page here. So for seven pounds, sorry, I'm gonna have to scroll up more. My computer's not letting me write because uh, I'm streaming. Uh, for seven pounds, the z-score is seven minus the mean. The mean in this case was five pounds, so minus five, divided by the standard deviation. The standard deviation this was one pound. So the z-score, the z standard score is two, in this case, a positive two. So uh, seven pounds is two standard deviations above the mean. So just as a reminder, the z-score could either be positive or negative. Um, positive means it is above the mean, negative means it is below the mean. Okay, so that, uh, that nicely, number question six, nicely, uh, at our normal distribution stuff. I believe that was uh, 6C. Yeah, it was the last section that we covered in 6, 6C. All right. And I'm not seeing any more questions in chat, so we will continue. Um, 
And if you do have a question again, feel free to type it. I will answer it as I see them, so perfectly fine. All right, number seven, we're looking at a linear equation. Um, so linear equation, linear modeling. Uh, so you have a new job working as a bartender in a small bar. Uh, your boss gives you a choice. You can earn a commission salary. So we have a base pay of $150 per night plus $10 for every $200 in alcohol sales. So um, you get a, a base pay of $150 if, if no one shows up at the bar. You're guaranteed $150 if you're working. Plus $10 if you make uh, uh, $10 for every $200 sale. Or you can earn a flat salary of simply $200 per night. So those are the two choices that you're given. Uh, first, find the equation of the line that represents the commission salary. So uh, we're ignoring the uh, base pay one. We're looking at the commission salary, which is uh, which is this one, and this is a linear uh, a linear equation. We're getting 150 plus a set amount, ten dollars for every sale uh, that you make for for the for the bar. So let's go to our digital paper. Let's uh, come up with the equation first for that. All right. So let's get. Let me. Uh, this set up. All right, so we have for the commission, oh, and this one was question seven. Okay, seven for the commission. I forgot how to spell commission. I think that's right. Uh, yes, uh, for the commission, we have a base pay of 150. And you're given ten dollars ten dollars per uh, two hundred dollars sale. And I'm going to simplify this for the sake of this first part, because uh, we don't want to get hung up in how much the sale is. We just want to think of it as ten dollars per sale. It's a little bit uh, excuse me, it's a little bit more than that. It's uh, per two hundred dollars sale. That will come in later, but let's just simplify this. And let's use um, P for pay, how much we're getting pay and, uh, paid, and S for sale. Um, now, when you're taking the exam, since this will be on Pearson, they will tell you what variables to use. So that, those are the variables we're using here. Uh, notice that this, this part right here, the $10 per sale, that is a rate because this is a, a, a rate, then this tells us this is our uh, slope. Okay, so our slope is $10. So uh, what is our starting amount B? So the initial amount, how much do we get paid if nothing else happens at work, if, if uh, no customers come in? Well, that is the 150. This is our initial amount. So B is 150. So we get that our pay is equal to 150 plus 10 times every sale that we get. And again, that's uh, uh, simplified. We're leaving out the details on the sale uh, because that can get you tripped up on coming up with the equation. So we're just, we're simplifying that. $10 per sale, it's a little bit more simplified than what we're given, but that is uh, sufficient for getting the equation. Let's go back to our document here. So we have, uh, find the equation of the line that represents the commission salary. So we did that. Next, what would, what would need to be the total sales in order for the commission salary to be more than the flat salary? Okay, so the flat salary is $200. So we're going to look at, at what point do we break even? 
if we go back to our digital page, we want to know um, for what number of sales, S, do we get our pay to be 200? So we have 200 equals 150 plus 10 times S. Uh, and we want to solve for S, so that's minus 150 from both sides. So left-hand side, we get 50 equals 10 times S. Let's divide both sides by 10. And so S equals five sales. And now let's bring back the uh, sale is how much? The sale is every $200 in alcohol sales. So let's go back to our document, our digital page. Uh, sales, lost my mouse. Here we go. Of 200. That that is a good uh, good question. Actually, yes. Um, if you want to know how much, you could you could solve for two ten, and it would be that much or more. Um, it would be yeah, that much or more. Um, in this case, this is going to show you the break even point. So anything above the break even point uh, would also be finding the same thing. Yeah. Um, actually, I think and this is getting a little bit nitpicky, but I think what you want to do, what will give you the more accurate number um, in all cases, uh, this one is a special type of, uh, the, the commission one is a special type of one, but um, what will give you the most accurate is, is looking at where do you break even, and then anything more than that uh, is what you should aim for. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, when you're looking at commissions, definitely looking at the next amount. So in this case, 210, uh, look at how many sales you get from that. Yep, that is correct. Uh, so in this case, we would need to uh, sell uh, more than $1,000 of alcohol that night uh, to make more than the flat rate. Since we got uh, S equals five sales of $200. Okay. Yep, so, so that is actually a good observation for the commission. The commission problems are always a little bit different uh, in nature than some of the other uh, linear ones. Um, so just be, because it might not be a commission one, it might be so, a different type of linear equation, uh, look for the break-even point. Um, but definitely if you're looking at the commission one, then you're right, you would just look at the next, the next step. So that would be 210. So that's a, that's a good observation. Okay. And I believe that is everything in question seven. So first find the equation, and then uh, what would you need the total sales to be? So in this case, more than 1,200, 1,000. Okay. Question eight, we're looking at either half-life or doubling time. So right now you have uh, one E. coli cell on your countertop. In the, in the right environment, the double, doubling time is 11 minutes. You want to know how many cell, cells <laughs> uh, will be uh, on your counter in three hours. Okay, so number eight. Let's go to our uh, digital paper. Going to need a new page. All right, so number eight, we have uh, the current number 
is one cell. We're given the doubling time. is 11 minutes. We want to know um, how many will there be after three hours. Okay. Let's go back to our review page. If we scroll up to the top, This is doubling time, which is this equation. So that will be provided. So the new value is the initial value times two to the lowercase t divided by the half-life. Okay. Go back to our digital paper. So this is the initial value is one cell. This is the initial value. This is our doubling time, so t uh, subscript double. And that's in minutes. And this then is lowercase t. And this is three hours. Now remember the one thing that we do have to check that we definitely always absolutely should make sure of for these problems is to make sure that the time units are the same. So in this case, we need to change three hours to minutes. Well, we know there are 60 minutes in an hour, so we do 30 times 60, not 30, <laughs> sorry. Not 30 hours, three hours. Three times 60, so we want, no, after 180 minutes. Okay. So the amount is going to be one times two to the power of uh, lowercase t is on the top, 180, divided by doubling time, 11, is in the denominator of the power. Okay, so let's go to our uh, calculator. We have one here. Okay, uh, so we're looking at one times parentheses two to the power. So you'll have either the y to the x or x to the y or the caret key. Parentheses, the time, lowercase t, 180, divided by the doubling time, which is 11. And let's see what we get. Uh, not plus, that should be divide by, <laughs> sorry. Let's try that again. One times parentheses two to the power of 180 divided by 11. So we get 84, let's round to the nearest whole number since we're talking about cells, uh, uh, 84,323 cells. So, 84,323 cells. So that's how many E. coli cells will be on the counter after three hours. All right, let's go back to our review. Uh, so that one was number eight. Uh, so nine and 10 should actually be one question, but I don't remember why I split it into two. Uh, so this one is an exponential model. So we wanna find the exponential model, the exponential equation that describes the situation. And number 10, we're answering a question from that equation. So uh, number nine, you're trying to increase your strength and your trainer indicated you can increase the weight of your bench press by 10% every week. If you start by benching 20 pounds, you wanna find an equation 
that will uh, represent how much you will bench for any given week after that. Okay, so notice that this doesn't have half-life or doubling time. So if I scroll back up to the top, we're using our uh, exponential equation, this one, this, uh, this equation. So we need to find Q naught and R. Okay, so let's scroll back down. Okay. So the first thing, um, can in, uh, we're, we're saying that you can increase your weight by 10%. So let's go to our digital paper. This one is number nine. So we can increase by 10%. And there's also actually a time that was given on that. That is uh, per week, every week. So per week. So you always want to, when you're looking at, especially these exponential questions, be aware of the time unit. Uh, so that is going to be R. So R is a positive 10%. So that's point 0.1. We want that in decimal form. And then the other thing we need is Q naught, which is the initial amount. So if we go back to our review, the initial amount is 20 pounds. If you start benching 20 pounds, so the initial amount Q naught is 20 pounds. Okay, so the equation is Q equals Q naught is 20 times one plus 0 0.1 to the power of T. So there is our exponential equation, our exponential model that represents the situation. Okay. And number 10, uh, given this exponential model, so the same situation from problem nine, what would be the amount you can bench after two years? So here, number 10, again, we're using the same situation as nine. So let me put 10 here. So we're asking uh, how much can you bench press after two years. Well, again, notice one thing that I want you guys to watch out for are the units here. Do the units match? In this case, they do not. So how many weeks are there per year? And this one you guys hopefully should know. 52 is correct, yes. So that is t equals two times 52 is 104 weeks. So after 104 weeks, how much should you be able to bench press? So we have the amount that we bench press is going to be 20 times one plus the 0 0.1 to the power of 104. And let's see how much we get for that, so let's go to our calculator. Let's see our calculator here. Let's clear this out. So we'll have 20 times one plus the 0.1 to the power of 104 weeks. And so we get uh, 403,500, and let's round to the nearest hole, 524 pounds. Okay. <laughs> so 
403,000. Five hundred twenty four pounds in just one hundred and four weeks. Okay, so that's what we get for that one. Let's go back to our review. Uh, does this make sense? Does this make sense? Could, could, uh, could we bench press 403,524 pounds? Okay, I'm seeing one answer. That is correct. Okay, <laughs> good. Yep, the answer is no, we, could, we can't. Not with uh, current technology, as somebody mentioned, good. Um, no, this doesn't make sense. So what that tells us is that this situation is in fact not an exponential, um, is not modeled by an exponential curve. It's not an ex exponential growth. Otherwise we would be able to. So, um, so in this case, it doesn't make sense. The 403 pounds, uh, 403,000 pounds, humans can't bench press that. Uh, not in this universe, at least. Uh, so this doesn't make sense, which means that this is not a, an exponential uh, situation. This cannot be modeled by an exponential curve. All right, and so that is our, our review. So that was question 10. All right, so as a reminder, when you are taking the exam, please make sure to write, uh, write down your steps. So, um, when you're taking the exam, write down what problem you're working on. Probably a good idea to write down the entire problem, quite like, uh, so let's go here. Maybe not the entire problem, but a summary. So number one, find the mean, median, and mode, and then show your work in steps, just as if you would uh, on it taking the exam in person, uh, and be prepared to scan in and uh, scan and turn in your work if you want partial points, um, possible partial points, not guaranteed, partial points for work towards the correct answer. Um, and I will include that in the, in the reminder email that I send out uh, probably on Monday. Um, okay, so that is our review. Are there any uh, last minute questions Let me go ahead and stop the share there. Okay, if there are no other questions, then that will be it for today. Uh, if you do have any questions, you can always email me. Um, otherwise, again, reminder, the exam will be Tuesday. We will not be having a lecture on Tuesday because it will be the exam. Um, so for, for the, the deviation formula, we're actually not going to be using that. That will not be tested on. Yeah. Um, number four. Yeah. So number four, we're not, number four, we're crossing out. We're not doing number four on this exam. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, any other any other questions? That was a couple of questions I saw there in the chat. Okay, so uh, again, if, if there are no other questions, I'll let you guys go. Uh, no lecture on Tuesday because Tuesday is the exam day. And uh, Thursday is, is Thanksgiving break, so. Um, oh, uh, I will be assigning the groups tonight. Uh, so just as a, as a quick last minute reminder, um, if you want to work on your own, make sure that you email me 
by today, if you have not already, or I guess by, you know, as soon as possible today, if you have not already, if you want to work alone, um, otherwise you will be assigned to a, a two or three person group. And that will be assigned today, uh, by tonight. Yep. Okay. Uh, thank you guys very much. Have a wonderful day. Uh, a wonderful weekend, I guess it is Thursday. Uh, and I will talk to you guys later. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, otherwise, have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, have a good weekend. Thank you, you as well.